Travolta. And the workshops, what I've I've sort of I've done several of them now, and I've started to realize there's three main stories that the project holds that can be activated. I'm sure there's others, but mm -hmm. three for me. Uh, one is the story about scoring or drawing mm -hmm. or creating a trace, which is what we're doing all the time with our maps and all mm -hmm. the drawings in the site, right? But that these traces then can generate new mm -hmm. possibilities. So you don't tra in our work, you don't trace to preserve and end the mm -hmm. project. You trace to begin new creation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So we do this in the in the project in the in the workshop. It's also a story about systems of organization as a way of making, mm -hmm. which is, of course, quite familiar in yeah. um, improv technologies in some ways. Started yeah. that conversation with the single body. This is with the group body. and um, But it's also what algorithms are. It's what mm -hmm. a lot of uh, generative drawing is. So it puts us in relationship to other fields. And a lot of people are working this way, so it's just a particular window into mm -hmm. systems that generate interesting results. Yeah. But they also teach us about social systems, mm -hmm. about who we are as individuals, yeah. in a group, yeah. about how we want to live in the world. Yeah. So there's a story about scoring, and there's a story about um, about group dynamics and systems of organization. And then um, there's the this thing of alignments and counterpoint, yeah. which is all of those things. But it's it's counterpoint really is an important metaphor for contemporary for us yeah. in contemporary life. I believe it. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to write a book about it. We'll see if I ever do. Because... Um, <laughs> We live with a high degree of difference all the time. And if we're trying to force that into unison, it's always a failed attempt and we're losing something. Yeah. And what I learned from this dance and from Forsyth's conception of counterpoint and from the counterpoint of our own interdisciplinary team yeah. working to make this thing mm -hmm. is this totally electric and exciting other space of looking for moments of agreement, mm -hmm. forms of alignment, mm -hmm. fleeting shape relationships, yeah. fleeting uh, synergies yeah. and allowing for those to kind of percolate amidst yeah. all this field of difference all the time. Just these in other installations we're doing, we were yeah. invited by Andreas Bregman, a curator in Germany, to make a really an art installation uh -huh. from the screen-based work, to yeah. sort of rip it out of the interface and yeah. create an art installation, which now we're touring mm -hmm. as an entirely other mm -hmm. way into the work. It's, it's really um, a more individual perspective. And then... Um, and then, and in the midst of this ongoing work, uh, mm -hmm. Synchronous Objects was the sort of pilot or the beginning point for um, the Forsyth Company to get some really substantial funding from the German government to initiate Motion Bank, mm -hmm. which is really uh, an effort to fund other choreographers to ask some similar questions, but within their own idea spaces. Yeah. Not yeah. to make another Synchronous Objects at oh, all nice. for any of us involved, but to say what else might this dance look like yeah what are the other possibilities for expressing the knowledge held within deborah hayes work or jonathan burrow's work or the choreographer that we'll work with who's a brazilian choreographer by the name of bruno beltrao uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <From Niterói. laughs> yeah so it's very it's very exciting to sort of start completely from yeah. the beginning and nobody's going to draw four size alignments on Bruno's choreography. Nobody's going to yeah. ask Deborah Hay to make queuing systems. It's really yeah. about, um, you know, I think Bill's interested in having other perspectives out of there and, and yeah. hel helping fund it and saying, this is not one, you know, the synchronous objects does not try to represent all of dance yeah. in any way or even yeah. all of four size work yeah. or anything. Yeah. It's one very rigorous, concrete, specific, demonstrative example. And we'd like that to sit up alongside hundreds of others that together tell the story of, of choreographic and dance knowledge. Yeah. It was really catalog. important to us to share the process catalog. I encourage people yeah. to go find it on the site. Yeah. Uh, each object shows some process yeah. of little... They're not even mistakes. It's just how the iterative process works. Some of them yeah. are quite comical, though, and we like this. Yeah. <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> like sometimes Superman. you try something and it looks like Spider-Man. Spider so yeah. you've got to re re revise it. But... Yeah. Um, so, you know, right now it's just enjoying the work and putting it out there. And um, we yeah. love hearing back from people when they yeah. use it. We get crazy things from Google Alerts, like wonderful. Someone uses the video abstraction tool to analyze baton movement for their scientific PhD, huh. some field, I can't remember. Yeah. And I try to aggregate them on the blog, though. Yeah. You know, or more obvious things, dance history teachers using it in their classrooms. Yeah. Um, 
Choreography, composition. People yeah. making stuff yeah. from it. I mean, yeah. it's also a very small world. I, I had students from Beijing who were at a workshop of mine in Amsterdam who had taken improvisation technologies workshops in mm -hmm. the past from the dancers. So these, these sort of circulation of ideas yeah. um, is really the pleasure of making these things. Yeah. Um, you know what this project does at its best? Um, synchronous objects invites people into a way to watch contemporary yeah. dance. Yeah. And not the only way, <laughs> yeah. not the only thing to watch for, but it gives, you know, so our geographer colleague had only ever seen Nutcracker because it's quite common. Yeah. And um, and since uh, working on this project and getting this deep sense of pattern uh -huh. and pattern emergence and structure is something that's actively of interest in yeah. a lot of contemporary yeah. work. He goes to see dances and he has a way into it and he's excited about it. He's yeah. completely unlocked something and invited yeah. him in. And to me that... It's just an individual anecdote, but it's it's really the the hope and power of these kinds of projects is opening a new way in for people to to access the knowledge that that's yeah. there. And how do you see the response of this in New York? You know, I am really <laughs> curious because you know, like all, know. all this stuff that we you're talking, and you know, is it is it stuff that I moved to New York to study about? You know, that we yeah, that know, we you know all this ex exercise about self organization, flocking, yeah, uh, expanding perception. I don't know. We've had we've had some invites. We've presented at Harvest Works, and we'll do a. Um, a lecture in uh, October with the Goethe Institute in, in New York. But honestly, the discourse on this is much more active in, in Europe. Yeah. Wow. I've toured all over Europe. I have invitations to Germany three or four every year. Yeah. There's this kind of like very active dialogue within yeah. the dance field. Yeah. <laughs> about this is huge revisionism and, uh, you know, of course. Technology uh, in the yeah. mix and what is notation and what is reconstruction they did this incredible cover festival in Amsterdam where young choreographers covered older you know sort of Pat, uh, you yeah. know Martha Graham or something like yeah. this there's yeah. this really um, active hungry conversation about what is a trace and what is knowledge and yeah. what does technology do in this and, and I haven't I'm sure it's in the US I haven't yeah, felt yeah. it as much yeah. uh, here um, and I know people are working to bring those together this MIT event that's coming yeah. up Harmony Bench and yeah. um, Tommy France and others you guys are <laughs> oh, I know we we need to share across these these yeah. boundaries and and that's the fun thing about the web. Yeah. Frankly, it's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And um and there's more opportunity to share, much more opportunity and um a real hunger and interest on both sides, I think. I don't think Bill would say this, but I think from the beginning that there was something incredibly courageous about him as someone of his stature yeah. being willing to take his dance and put it out there in this way for free and completely reimagined and reconstructed and yeah. yes he was an integral part of doing that reimagining yeah. and reconstructing but there's something very generous about letting that happen and yeah. courageous and um, it's not for the faint of heart <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes it's not and uh, definitely he's not one of those <laughs> yeah well thank you very much you're welcome and I uh, hope to, to see you again thank you soon. yeah cool good. thank you <laughs>